If you're expecting the ISO settings on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max in Apple Lock to behave just like your mirrorless camera, you might be in for a bad surprise, as for some reason Apple has implemented them in a very weird and unintuitive way. So you might ask yourself the question, which ISO settings should I use to get the best image quality possible? That's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. 1600, 200, 155. These are the ISOs you should stick to. Video over. See ya! Okay, maybe I have to explain a little bit more because as mentioned ISO has quite a huge impact on the image quality with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max when shooting an Apple Log and unfortunately the ISO settings really don't behave like you would expect them to. From previous tests we already know that the optimum ISO in terms of dynamic range is somewhere around 1250 for the sense of the main camera on the back. Big shout out here to Gerald Undun and Cine D for the scientific tests. But I want to dive a bit deeper because besides the dynamic range numbers, the ISO has an impact in form of macro blocking and sharpness of the image. In the wrong settings you can end up with some nasty artifacts or a softer image and I have not seen many people talk about this. As an example, here you can see that I have chosen a bad ISO setting on the left and a good one on the right. Dynamic range wise they are very similar, but look at the lack of detail in the left shot. And here's another scenario where you can see that with a good ISO setting there's a tad more noise but much less macro blocking. These artifacts can hardly be removed in post, so if you choose the wrong ISO setting you might be in for a bad surprise. Just to mention, the macro blocking issues are quite a bit reduced when shooting in the higher data rate flavors of Apple ProRes. But I'm going to stick to H.265 here for the rest of the video, as this is probably what most people use and it can provide an excellent video quality at a manageable file size. Again, with ProRes macro blocking is less of a concern, but besides that the same logic in terms of ISO applies. What's What's interesting with the iPhone's ISO implementation is that it seems to be a mix of fake and real ISO steps and fake ones can lure you into thinking that you're getting a better video quality when you really are not. With real ISOs I'm referring to settings that really change the sensitivity of the sensor and fake ISOs are settings that just shift data around in the container but don't really give you any benefit in terms of dynamic range. Okay, enough about why the correct ISO setting is so important. Let's have a quick look at what happens when we switch through the ISO settings. We start with ISO 55, which is the lowest ISO for the main camera on the back of the iPhone 50 Pro and Pro Max. For video shooting, I'm going to use the Blackmagic camera app. And of course, we're going to have a look at the shots in DaVinci Resolve. And no, this video is not sponsored by Blackmagic. By the way, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter as I will be on NAB soon and will post some updates from there. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please like and subscribe. In the first image here, you can see the ISO 55 setting and you can see that the highlights are not clipping and we capture pretty much the whole dynamic range of the scene. All by be it with a bit of an underexposure, but that's on purpose. Of course, this is locked, so it does look very flat without correction, but I want to show you the uncorrected video first. Let's raise the ISO to 100 and as you would expect, the data levels have increased. The scene is now captured brighter and we can see a bit more information in the shadows. Nothing special so far. Same goes with ISO 200. It's again brighter than 100 and this continues with ISO 400. With ISO 400 we can see that the input has gotten so bright that some highlights are now starting to clip. This is as expected for real ISO settings and you could use for example an ND filter or higher shutter speeds to bring the signal back into range. But I don't want to do that because let's check out what happens when we go to ISO 800. Yes, the data levels increase again as expected. But if this was a real ISO step, the image would clip even more. But let me correct the ISO 400 and ISO 800 shots in post to match their exposures. As you can see, the image clips pretty much at the same point in the highlights. This means that the step from ISO 400 to 800 did not change the sensitivity of the sensor, but just shifted the data upwards. And this actually continues. You can see that increasing the ISO to 1250, 1600, 2000 and 2500, the image gets brighter and brighter, but if we correct them in post to the same brightness, they all clip at the exact same level, which is really not what you would expect. Let's continue to raise the ISO. After 2500, I set the ISO to 3200 and you can immediately notice that we are now heavily clipping data as some of it is pushed out of range. And unsurprisingly, when we raise the ISO to the maximum of 5280, we lose even more highlight information. So the ISO range of the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max can be divided into three sections. 
In the area from 55 to 400, you get a real change of sensitivity of the sensor. Above 400, the clipping point of the sensor does not change and the data just seems to be shifted upwards. And above 2500, the signal will actually be pushed out of range and this clips highlight information. As others have shown in their dynamic range testing, the best ISO seems to be somewhere around 1250. In fact, if you compare it to 1600, 2000 and 2500, you will only find minute differences between these four ISO settings. The sensor's clipping point is the same, the noise performance is also pretty much identical, and I have yet to see any differences between the settings under real-world conditions. That's the reason why I have chosen 1600 as the best ISO out of the four, simply out of convenience. 1600 gives you the highest amount of dynamic range. It is easy to select in the Blackmagic camera app without the need to scroll around with a dial. And the clipping point of 95% is also easy to remember and to set up for the zebras. So we have determined that 1600 is the best ISO in terms of dynamic range, but aren't there any scenarios where you might want to use 400, 800 or 3200 and above? No. If you choose a higher ISO than 1600, you will reduce the dynamic range because the highlights are cut off, as they are pushed out of range and you don't gain anything in terms of noise performance. Shooting at 1600 and boosting it in post will give you the same good or bad results as shooting with 3200 or higher, but with more information in the highlights. But don't just take my words for it, here I have a shot on the left where I was outside at night. The shutter speed was already as low as I wanted to go, but the image was still relatively dark. So naturally you would want to raise the ISO and I've done this in the right shot. But you can already see in the uncorrected video that we have cut off some of the highlight information. And when we correct the footage and boost the ISO 1600 shot to bring it to the same brightness as the ISO 5280 shot, you can see the same amount of noise. But again, the ISO 5280 shot has cut off highlights, whereas the 1600 shot holds much more highlight information and otherwise looks the same. So there's literally no reason you would ever want to go higher than ISO 1600. This is the best the sensor can deliver. What about the other direction? Let's say you're outside in a very bright condition and you want to lower your ISO to not clip your highlights. Let's say you want to go down from 1600 to 400. At a first glance you have achieved your goal, the image looks darker. But corrected you can see that the lower ISO is still clipping the same amount as the higher one, but now you run the risk to introduce macro blocking artifacts. I don't want to go into full technical mode here, but the reason for this is that the data with the ISO 400 shot is encoded in the toe part of the Apple Log function. And because of that it has much less data available per stop of light and this increases macro blocking and banding. The same is true for ISO 800. So you don't gain any highlight information with ISO 400 and 800, but increase the risk of macro blocking. These ISOs should also be avoided. I haven't found any benefit in practice to using them over ISO 1600. But I did mention that ISO 200, 155 are useful ISOs, and that's absolutely true. The benefit of the three aforementioned ISOs is that they really help you to pull back the highlights, which can prevent them from clipping, as they truly reduce the sensor's sensitivity. Additionally, you saw in the comparison that these ISOs can be noticeably sharper than ISO 1600, as there seems to be less internal noise reduction needed. But the downside is that the data level for the shadows is again encoded lower, which might introduce macro blocking in smooth gradients, especially when you need to brighten up the image in post. So exposing to the right becomes even more important with the lower ISO settings. So what's the main takeaway here? When you shoot in Apple Log with the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max with the main camera and you want to get the sharpest image possible, stick to ISO 55, 100 and 200. These ISOs are prime candidates for shots outside in bright daylight. But you have to be a bit careful to not underexpose them too much as they have a tendency to show macro blocking in smooth gradients in the shadows. If you want to get the maximum amount of dynamic range and smoothest gradients, then ISO 1600 is the best choice. This comes at a very slight reduction in image sharpness, which is mostly noticeable in the shadows again. I recommend this as a go-to ISO for indoor or low light shooting. All other ISOs besides the four ones mentioned can be confidently ignored, as they will always give you a worse image quality without any benefit. Bonus tip, if you use ISO 1600, set your zebras to 95% and with ISO 55, 100 and 200, set your zebras to 79% to correctly indicate clipping. I hope you like this little deep dive. 
like and subscribe and i will see you all in the next one